Uh, good morning, guys. Welcome to Nichols Retirement Out Outpire. I'm an outpire. Um, anyway, I'm out here. I'm on the Brick Hill River uh, next to Cumberland Island. Fishing a new spot that me and Paul tried to fish the other day. We didn't have any luck, but uh, today I think we got the tide right. So maybe I'll be able to catch something here. It's a new spot, hoping. Um, but, you know, yesterday you saw me working on the farm, and now I'm out here on my ship. <laughs> Actually, I was working in the garden, and now I'm out here on my boat. So let's see what we can get into. Okay. Took me about 10 minutes there, 15 minutes. But trout number one. a really good looking spot when we fished it the other day uh, me and Paul we just kept saying how are we not catching fish here because it just looked just looked great what a pretty fish so I think hopefully we were right man I just missed another one in the next cast maybe we're into something Okay, I've caught that one fish. I had two bites in a row. Um, it just looks like a really good spot because there's a channel that runs really close to the bank here. And then right up in front of me, there's a big spot where it looks like it's rocks or shells. Just one big spot. Um, so I guess the bottom right there is a little bit different. There's a lot of birds. Um, when we were here the other day, we were reading a ton of fish on the on the fish finder, uh, kind of out off the bank. So it's obvious. Another bite there. But it just seems obvious from everything you know around that there ought to be fish somewhere on this bank. And it's been real windy the last three or four days, like really windy. And today it's a northeast wind. And this is a spot that is kind, of, kind of blocks me from the wind. So it's hard, you know, you got to find places that you can fish in certain kinds of wind. All right, here's another one. Yeah, smaller trout, that's all right. At least I know they're there. It's a real little one. A little trout. Little guy. All right. Number three. Not bad one changed over to a different cork. Uh, this one just doesn't have a weight on it. It just floats. And that way the that way the shrimp's a little more natural in the way it swims. You can see the little shrimp tentacles hanging out of its mouth where it, <laughs> where it ate that shrimp or other shrimp. Yeah, I moved down a little bit. There's like patches, uh, patches down this bank, you know, where there's shells. Here's a patch of shells. There's two patches of shells down there. Uh, it's like there's not shells everywhere. They're just in little spots. I had about five bites, five casts in a row where I had a bite at the first one. And then on this one, I've thrown twice and had one, you know, caught that one fish. So either the fish are kind of moving along or the, maybe the shrimps, you know, up and down this bank, I don't know. Okay. My bites kind of stopped up there, so I'm gonna move down here. There's 
not so many patches of uh, shells down this stretch. So I'm going to move down here to where this tree is sticking out in the water. I'm going to fish right there. This water is kind of muddied up a touch. That always happens when the tide changes. Is the, there'll be a period where the water gets muddy and then it'll clear up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to this tree. If I don't catch anything on this tree, I may either, I'll probably go back up there to where I was catching those on those shells. Okay. I went back up. I tried all those spots again. I only had one bite. That was it. And the water is a good bit muddier than what it was when I started. So, I'm going to try on these trees uh, with some fiddler crabs and see if I can catch any sheep's head. And if not, I'm going to start moving. Well, I know there's at least one down there because he got my crab. Uh, it wasn't much of a bite, but there's hope. Well, I guess I'm picking up where me and Paul left the other day. Float rigging fiddler crabs not a popular practice but it is for us Looks like a charm. Just get a float rig. Throw a uh, throw a fiddler crab on it instead of a shrimp. These aren't big ones, but for something to catch. Okay, I actually used my uh, split shot because the currents kind of stopped and I get more bites on the daggone float rig than I was getting on the split shot because I have to, there's a certain place I have to cast up here for them to hit. And the float rig out here on the, not the float rig, but the split shot out here on the tree which is where you usually get all your bites. It's not getting the bites that, that this is. But, I would like to be hooking the fish. Man, these 
things are slick today. They are stealing. They are stealing. Mother in stripes, the convicts. They keep stealing my fiddlers. Man. They are smart. <laughs> Every time you fish for these things, it's something different. <laughs> the way you got to catch them is something different. It's crazy. Figuring out how to do it. And then by the time you figure it out, you're about out of fiddler crabs. But it's fun because you get a lot of bites. Even if you don't catch all of them, you get a lot of bites. Good for kids. Like me. All right, I'm out of fiddlers. So let's see if um, trout have come back to life. The water's cleared up, it's pretty. So, the only bad thing is I know there's a million sheep's head up there and they're going to be eating my shrimp as fast as I can. So I'll have to kind of avoid the sheep head areas. Well, that worked out. Did what I said. Went for the trout. And there he is. Good one. As soon as that water got... All right, guys. I got the come home phone call. So, I'm going home. Appreciate y'all watching. Have a good day on Nichols Retirement Empire. See y'all.